Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hashraptor YouTube channel. Hope you're doing great today. We've got some new parts in. We're going to consolidate some GPUs as we start a 3000 series rig build here. And I'm going to walk you through everything that we've got. Okay, so here's what's going on, guys. We took down a couple of rigs because we sold our 10 series GPUs. And in this older rig frame right here, as I've been getting in a couple 3060 Ti's, I've got this EVGA 3060 Ti, it's a For the Win 3 edition, and the same over here. And these were just up and running temporarily. So I've got two 3060 Ti's there. And up here we've got our NVIDIA 3060 Ti also. And in, in shipping right now that will arrive tomorrow, unfortunately, I have a Zotac card on the way. So we'll have four 3060 Ti's, and the idea is to fill out this six GPU VETA rig frame with all 3060 Ti's. And we're gonna use some of the latest gear that we've got in. But in the meantime, I think what I'm gonna do, it'll probably take me a couple videos to build all of this out and get it fully tested, is I have a couple 3070's that I've picked up just because they were available. And I'm gonna drop those in place until I can fill those two slots with 3060 Ti's. And at some point I'll take these 3070's and I do have this additional Gigabyte Aorus 3070 over here. And I guess I'll start a 3070 rig as well, since this one only holds six GPUs. All right, so let me walk you through all the parts we're gonna be using today. Now, as I mentioned recently, I took this Titan rig frame sort of out of production when I sold those 10 series cards. And these fans that are on here are really, really old. These are several years old, so I wanna just redo all of this, replace a lot of this gear right here. I am gonna repurpose the motherboard, the processor, and the memory. So we're gonna use that in this build, but we're gonna get rid of this ATX power supply over here. And I may temporarily use this 1200 watt server power supply. And the reason for that is it can do 110 volt AC power. And I wanna do some meter readings at the wall and once I load up a full circuit, I don't have a great way to do that on 220. So we'll use that in this video right here to get going. But eventually what we're gonna have in here is, down here, this Delta 2400 watt power supply. And it cannot work on 110, it's gotta be 220 and above. So we'll migrate to that power supply eventually. And partnered up with that, I'm gonna use this new parallel miner Pico breakout board, which right now I'm in love with. You may have seen the video I put out on this. So you've got the 24 pin, you've got 16 PCIe six pin power cables here. You've got a fan hub. You've got really everything you need on one board. And what this does is it eliminates the need for an ATX power supply. So what I think I'll do is once I start implementing these throughout the farm, I'll just take these older ATX power supplies. A lot of these, I started out with platinum power supplies and I'll probably just use those for new builds, use them independently, maybe partner them up together. And then for fans, I'm gonna be using these AAA Wave 120 millimeter. These are 2100 RPM fans. These were sent over to me for review for free quite a while back from AAA Wave. And I know parts are heavily picked over right now with the mining craze that's going on but I can tell you for sure that these are really good fans. These are some of my favorites that I have in the farm, the highest CFM, and they just don't make a, a ton of noise, but they push a lot of air. So if you're looking for some good budget-friendly fans, if you can find them, pick some of these up. And for cables and risers, I am gonna be using some Nerd Gears cables that I've got here, and I have a hodgepodge of cables and risers that I bought from them and some that they've sent. So just full disclosure there, I don't know which is which on these at this point. And then as for the frame, we are gonna be using this six GPU VETA rig frame. And you may recognize this, this has been sitting off to the side for quite a while. This is the same frame that I built in the build competition I did with a bunch of our other favorite YouTubers last year. And that was just loads of fun, guys but I haven't put this into production and I wanna use it. So why not use a brand new rig frame, get all new parts, all new fans, everything, 
loaded up for this new build and we'll probably position it right up here taking the place of Rogue One. So yeah, all right, that was a lot. Let me, uh, let me get started. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this motherboard out, I think, first and get that ready. And since this rig frame is already built, I'll get it mounted and I will be back. All right, folks, we are going to do a quick aside. We are going to do the giveaway for the nerdgears.com power supply breakout board power cable giveaway. And what we asked you to do was leave a comment on this video where we were doing hash rate testing for this EVGA 3060 Ti for the Win 3. Okay, so we have the video URL in there. We are using the filtered comments for Nerd Gears, and you can only enter once. So let's make a selection here and get a winner. Good luck, everyone. Corey Hunter, nerdgears.com power supply. Thanks for the in info and giveaway. Awesome, Corey. Okay, do me a favor. Leave a comment in this video acknowledging that you have won. This is the only way that I can eliminate spammers, and then I will coordinate the rest of the way for you to get that Nerd Gears power supply. So congratulations, Corey. Thanks so much for watching and commenting. Now stay tuned. In the next video, we are going to be doing a GPU risers dot com giveaway so stay tuned on how to enter for that you'll get those details in the next video okay back to the show okay guys my fan came on hopefully you can hear me okay but so I've got the motherboard out and I've been working on this for a little while this VETA frame so I got the five fans in and this is the first time I put a VETA frame into production and the way the VETA frame is designed is for the fans to go on the back side but I also am thinking I would like some fans on the front. Oh my gosh, I am having flashbacks from the rig build competition. I forgot how much I hated these better rig frames. But I think I figured something out. <laughs> so I lowered down this uh, mounting bracket right here that the front of the GPU is going to connect to. So the back's going to sit here, and then the front's going to screw into here. Instead of taking this, and then notching it here like it wants and slide straight down. That's just gonna interfere with the GPU. What I did is I connected it on the exterior right here. And that gives enough clearance for the GPU in the front right here for these like these little parts that stick out on the display port and HDMI. So it looks like this is gonna work. I mean, uh, fingers crossed I'm not forgetting anything here. So I still have to get the motherboard in there and Check this out, guys. This is, you're gonna laugh at me. I gave one of my other six GPU better rig frame to a friend of mine, a good friend who is getting into mining. And when I gave him that, I accidentally gave him the mounting studs for the motherboard to go on here. So I am going to go Red Panda on this and put down a box until I pick up those studs from him. Oh, this is such a pain. <laughs> Not having a bottom it just makes it really difficult trying to orient everything. And so what I've decided to do for now, I was playing around with this Delta 2400 watt power supply and I was resting the front on this front bar and using that second bar for support. And that worked pretty well. If you look down here, I connected power to the motherboard, the 24 pin, and we've got the processor power. But I had to spin this motherboard facing backwards so that I could get the fan power over here to this fan hub. And I've tried spinning it all different directions and nothing really worked well. I also was able to get this Molex over here into the motherboard but what I don't have is a second Molex to go into here. I usually power all of this. I power the SATA and both Molex cables but I've heard people say that they don't and it works fine. So I guess I'm gonna give that a try here and see how it works. But if you guys have suggestions do let me know in the comments below if there's something I'm missing or another way I can do this. Alright so <laughs> A couple things. As it turns out, this VETA frame is definitely not 
the best when you're wanting to move things around and you need some freedom organizing maybe a server power supply. It was really a nightmare trying to find a bar to get this positioned on and I still need to secure it probably with a zip tie or something like that or a couple zip ties but there is some tension on all these cables and it is sitting on a bar so it should be good for the next couple days but I had to play around with orientation a bit so for example I ended up spinning it once again and here's the front and you can see right here the breakout board is now facing forward and one way that's going to be handy is for the power switch that's right here and one thing to be aware of is this breakout board it has so many connections which is fantastic it just gets really busy in there fast it becomes a, a bird's nest and you really need to think through what you're connecting first I recommend going with your larger wires and then work inside out connecting all the smaller wires after that because yeah it gets it gets a little crazy I did do some basic cable management here on my PCIe power cables going up so let me show you where we are right now I actually had to leave town for a couple of days so this is where I got the rig we got one two three four five five GPUs up you can see we got all the AAA wave fans on the front. We got everything pointing the right way, so we're, we've got air being pulled from the back side over there. We've got fans all along the back, and these on the front, so there's really good airflow pulling heat off right now and moving air across the cards. And then over here, I've been running in solo mode still this NVIDIA 3060 Ti, but what I wanted to show you was it just came in today. It actually came in as I was pulling back into town and I was able to pick it up. And this is a Zotac model um, that I picked up from their website from an alert and I just had to rush over and place the order as fast as I can. And I have not had uh, a Zotac 3060 Ti, so I'm gonna get that unboxed. I don't even know what it looks like really. So let's take a look at that together and uh, then I'm gonna find a spot for it in the rig here. So let me open this up and I'll be right back. So I got it opened up and it looks really good. I mean, I like the design on this card. It's it's no frills. I mean, it's pretty simple, but it's exactly, you know, what we need. It's got, let's see here, one HDMI 3 display port, uh, two fans on here, and it is a single eight pin, which is nice for power management purposes. Oh man, uh, not good news, folks. So I got the 3070s move down i just consolidated them to this side of the rig until i fill this back up with 3060 ti's and i was dropping in the new zotac 3060 ti and i was really impressed with how small it is so down here's the bar for the veta frame and the back of the gpu won't reach it i can take this thing back apart and flip this meaning take this bar and flip it this way to get this piece here and it'll be under all of these GPUs. I'm just a bit frustrated because I thought I was just about to screw this thing in and power it on. Yeah, so you can see the bar on this AAA wave frame is already in the right spot right here. And if I needed to move it, even if it wasn't, you can see there's screw holes all along here. And it's just really easy to reposition that. Yeah, this thing, it's all put together now. So what we've got here is the two EVGA for the Win 3 3060 Ti's the NVIDIA 3060 Ti, and then 3370s. And the idea is that eventually we'll take the single 3060 Ti in the next video, get it in here, and then as soon as I can snag two more, we'll have this completed 3060 Ti rig. So let's, uh, let's fire this thing up and see if we can get to hashing. Okay, so in the next video, we'll do hash rate testing. We'll take a look at as many algorithms as we can on this. We'll do profitability, all that stuff. We'll clean all of this up, the cabling. We'll probably maybe put on some new risers. I'm not 100% sure on that, but we'll, we'll finish this rig out completely in the next video. But uh, let's jump over to Hive real quick. Actually, I'll just check it here on my smartphone. All right, guys, we are up and we are mining here. Let me show you what's going on in Hive. And just want to show you, we got the rig up. And I did a little bit of tweaking in here 
to accommodate for the 3070s, which seem to require a little bit more wattage, unfortunately. Right now we're at 372 mega hash, and everything's running pretty solid so far. I'll do some more configuring on these overclocks here, and I'm gonna do a little bit more organization down here and get this rig all squared up. This is the 3070 Aorus, the gigabyte card. I've got it set to roll between the wattage and the temperature. And that is, you know, slightly useful. If I put this maybe in the middle of the rig and I want to see what the temperature looks like, I can just get a, you know, a quick look when I'm out there standing beside the rig uh, versus it just being a random graphic or turning it off altogether. So the question is going to be when I pull it from this machine, is it going to wipe that information or is it loaded locally once I configure it and apply it? I am assuming it's going to wipe it, but we're going to give that a shot. I'm going to yank this thing, go put it in the rig and Let's see what happens here. And before I forget, I think I started out this video by checking to see if we could get the wattage uh, and the temperature on these LCDs once we move from Windows to Hive. And unfortunately, the LCD memory, it didn't persist when I took it out of the Windows machine, which is what I expected. I, I think that that's being loaded at boot on the PC side. So that's unfortunate. Maybe I know for the Hive team, it's probably not at the top of their priority list, but it'd be great if you know they could sneak in that functionality so we could use those LCD displays. And yeah, 372 mega hash, that is almost as much as my Kenobi rig, which is 13, 1660 Ti's, which is running just a hair under 400 mega hash. But that's with 13, 1660 Ti's. And over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So from a space standpoint and a densification standpoint, this rig wins out, but certainly from reliability and stability over the last couple years, this rig has just been amazing. And I'm just gonna ride this thing into the ground. I just love these cards so much. All right, guys, I'm, I'm going really long on this video. Let me stop there. We will see you in the next one. Take care, Raptors. If we just try yeah. And as long as we have our backs We'll never Our faults come by This time We will win This time We'll have to join forces This time We will win This time We'll have to join forces